I'm going to sit here and watch your Facebook and see whether people hit a thousand because it should be very very soon. I actually check my Twitter at the same time. Quick shot as well. Uh, let's see. It'll be in chat because these mods are amazing, and I want to give a quick shout out to them and say thank you for uh, keeping an eye on the chat while this stream's going on. Now that we're up to eighteen thousand viewers, so you're all awesome for tuning in and thank you. But we're in AR vs Fanatic picks and bans and <laughs> twisted fate is gone just like that um, and there's the Mundo so wow AL have really got their th bans thought out twisted fate and Jack's taken really really quickly and that's taking a little bit longer getting rid of Mundo don't want to give that to Maluno again He's uh, certainly made a name for himself on that ever since about Gamers Assembly, in fact, in uh, April. We are down to our last 10 seconds before they decide on the next one. Ari, so one of Extinct's strong champions, taking her out of the picture early on, although she's been, or Extinct, he has been playing a fairly beasty Lulu so far in this tournament. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I'd quite like to see it again. I'd also like to see what Fnatic's answer is to put it up in the mid lane. And Nocturne, then the final ban from AL. He's been a really common one, whether he's been banned or whether he's been picked. He really is coming back with a force, much like Nautilus, who, unless he gets banned out here, is still open, but like Urgot and Seraka are. So, plenty of options up. Lots of champions that are borderline overpowered, as some people may just say, I use the word loosely, are still open, and Nautilus is finally taken away. So, we still have... Soraka Ergo up, and now the Fnatic have got these first two picks. They could take it away because it thinks he's grabbed himself that Shen. So I am back, and Instalock split push Shen for Extinct. Yep, simple as that, straight enough. I like Shen, I very much like seeing Shen in the top lane, so. Let's see how effective that's going to be against Fnatic and who they're going to put up there against Shen. If, of course, it is Shen that's going to go top, he could go jungle. I have Acer asking, are you recording all of these? I am. It is being recorded to my Twitch account. And what I do afterwards is I create highlights on Twitch. And those highlights are then uploaded to YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, my recording software on the PC causes a few hiccups. But uh, I will be doing the highlights. I will be shifting it all over to my YouTube channel during the course of tomorrow. There you go. Hopefully Erotic is watching and listening. But if not, I'll tell him I'm game anyway. And there is that so I can pick up straight away. Leave her open. It's not going to be open for long. I wonder if Cyanide's going to put that uh, Riven in the jungle again like he did last game. I mean, it seemed to work very effectively against SK Gaming. Soraka has been locked in, and now Absolute Legends looking like they're going to take Morgana as well. Morgana and Shen, that is a very, very scary uh, combination. That is horrible. I have to see what Fnatic answers then. <laughs> they take away that Ash. Lamia's Ash is formidable. The amount of quadra and pentakills in online and offline tournament play I have seen from AD carry across every game I've seen, I think, are just dwarfed by Lamia alone when he plays Ash. Yeah, it's very, very true. And are we going to see a Zerath? Oh, that would have been cool. I like Zerath. Arcano Pulse, Mage Chains, go, go, go. Let's see who there's going to put here. Olaf should be able to take out a Shen in the top lane. The damage that he's got is pretty high. The true damage will get through that uh, damage shield that Shen can put up. And of course, if he lands a couple of those undertoes, he's going to be able to stick to him as well. But of course, it hasn't been locked in, so let's wait and see. Oh, that is interesting as well. If it is Olaf and if it is going to be top lane, does that mean Shusha is going to be playing Olaf? 
It's been a while since I've seen Shusha play a bruiser. I like this is the beauty of the current AD um bruiser top lanes. A lot of the champions that you're playing up there can also be put in the jungle. Yeah. So by picking them, you're not always revealing your strategy. It's very, very true. Now, just in terms of the semi-finals that are going... Actually, uh, these are the quarter-finals. The other quarter-finals that are busy being played, Moscow 5 versus Eclipsia, Cypher versus TCM. Of course, we're in Absolute Legends versus Fnatic. Then you have Embrace the End versus Team Megashock. Embrace the End versus Team Megashock will be coming up against one of the winners of either Fnatic or Absolute Legends. Over on the other servers, we have a semi-final of CLG EU versus Mutual Makers. And in the bottom, you have... Oh, who is this? Navi versus... I think it's Biker? I can't really see. It's a Polish team. Binary Beast. Daniel... Uh, oh, it's XHCL. All right, XHCL. There we go. So XHCL versus Navi for semi-final one. And CLG versus MIM for semi-final number two. The winners of those will be in the grand final. So a lot of big names at the moment. A lot of big names. Olaf is an Olaf. Suchet is going to be running Rumble in the top lane. But Filiox doesn't own Rumble, so Olaf is a oh, placeholder. Okay, so we're going to do a remake then on this game. Yes. All right, so it's going to be Rumble in the top lane then. Okay, that I have seen. I have seen Shushe playing Rumble. So that's very interesting, but uh, at least we know what's going to be happening. So for everybody that doesn't know, this is, of course, Absolute Legends versus um, Fnatic. I suppose I can quit spectating, right? Um, I th think so. Yeah, it looks like this game has died. So I'm going to quickly just quit spectating. I know Zinek has invited me to all of the Absolute Legends games thus far. So I'm going to wait for uh, that one to happen. And for everybody that's on the stream, you guys are totally, totally awesome. We have the number one LOL stream on Twitch and owned at the minute. And we're just shy of 20,000 viewers. You guys rock. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we will be back on Thursday again with another qualifier. Uh, I have quit that game, by the way. So I'm just waiting for the next one to start up. Um, where is every other one? Uh, the lobby stays up, but he needs to kick us from the spectator slots before it'll actually let us back in. I have the password. I'll send it to you on Skype. Please do. That would be great. Oh, there we go. It's added me back in. Has it done the same for you? No, no. I actually clicked quit, quit spectating. I assumed we were going no, to... No, I did that too. But oh. I was sitting there looking at the uh, custom game lobby and it suddenly added me back in. Okay. Well, I assume we're going to have a remake. So for everybody that is busy tuning in, we are, of course, just going to be remaking the uh, um, the lobby so for Fnatic versus AL. I'm going to quickly throw up an advert break and we'll be back, hopefully, with the lobby in 30 seconds. Yeah, gonna remake a blind pick. All right, sweet. Sixty followers away from a thousand on Twitter. At Ale Panky for those of you that are kind enough to follow. And of course, at a quick shot while you're there. So we are going to jump into this game. I'm just waiting for the next one. Let me know once the lobby is up. Oh, there we go. Zinek has invited. Zinek, you are a legend. Thank you so much for all of the invites. Every time Absolute Legends has played, he's invited me, so you are amazing and awesome, and thank you very much. Don't tell him that. He'll never shut up about it. Oh, well, you know, he's a nice guy. Come on. Le le you know, give, give credit where it's due. It is. Zinnick's a lovely guy. And of course, for everybody that is running Adblock, keep in mind that it, it does negatively affect the streamers, but that, you know, it's your choice. You're welcome to do so. Keeping an eye on chat. Let's try break 20,000 viewers, guys. We still have at least two, I think maybe three more games in this one. Um, my math is a bit terrible. So we'll have to see exactly how many more matches we've got. But I think we might jump into the grand final for EU Nordic and East next. Because that's going to be a pretty big one. There's a lot of big names at the moment. And then maybe come back for a semi-final or a grand final here on EU West. What do you think, Panky? I think that sounds cool. Are they actually playing the grand final? 
I that's a because if the top four true. go through, then uh, that's right. Do they, they even need to. Yeah, that's also true. But either way, we've got this game, and then at the least one more round from yep. here, and we can pick the best one between the two. Actually, no, we don't. The semi-finals is the semi-finals. That's the four. Uh, remember, it's top two though, hey? Because it's top two. Oh, it top? On... Of course, it's top two because it's yeah. four from each four Tuesday from and each Thursday. Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. Panky We've got at least one more game after this. Twitter.com Panky, hey? Twitter got Twitter.com slash al Panky. Al Panky. Because Panky is taken by some Russian guy that hasn't tweeted in nearly two years, but I can't get the username. That sucks a lot. Although I think the way to work, if I hit 10,000 followers, then I can uh, claim it, but that wow. might be... Is, is that vision. all? That's, that's that the all? trigger, yeah, that's you know? <laughs> just 10,000. No problem, no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll pull that off, no, no issues at all. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me actually pull up the tournament page on stream. Uh, I think I've got it up. Where is my stream page? So, no, that's not the tournament page. That's the tournament page. Uh, I'll put up a Reddit link in just a second. The tournament page for this is open to everybody. And, of course, we, there is another qualifier happening on Thursday. So, guys, head over to the page. Check it out. If you have a team, if you have a pre-made, why not register? Try your hand. You know, play some of these guys. Maybe you, maybe you stand a chance to win. And, of course, you can check it out. So, now we're going to minimize this really, really quickly. Casters are ready. We have all 10 players in the game. And let's see what happens. All right, so we just found out confirmation from the admins. The winners of the semi-finals will be going through to uh, the grand final. And of course, the players in the grand final qualify for Sunday, so we're not actually going to cast that. After this game, we have one more, and then we're going to be able to call it a night. Now we're going to have a, have a bash and see what's happening with the lock-ins and the picks. It's not going to be a Pantheon, no matter how hard XPK tries to kill us. <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome if, I, if it was there, but sadly it is not. And for everybody that's on stream, this is a quarter-final on EU West. Absolute Legends versus Fnatic. We're into the last little minute of swapping around. Shen in the jungle, Renekton up top facing off against Rumble. And that's going to be a fun one. That's going to be an interesting one to see. I like Renekton. I like, I love Rumble. Big, big, big fan of that champion. So how does this qualifier work? It is a uh, single elimination bracket. It is normally uh, seeded, but unfortunately there were some technical difficulties earlier today, which meant that there was random picks. Hence, a couple of the bigger names facing off against one another earlier on in the, the bracket than we would usually see. So we've already seen Millennium going out to Eclipsia. We've seen Fnatic taking out SK. Do you remember any other big names going down? My, my memory's starting to fail me, Panky. Uh, I wouldn't call them big names, but they were uh, certainly a team with impact. We had um, Derpers going out fairly early on. Uh, let's see who else is still here. Game Hoppers lost to Moscow 5 in round 2. Well, we are into the 3 minute countdown now. So at the very least, uh, we're moving towards the next game. And in fact, against the authority, we're now in round 4. Wow, so a lot of the big names have been knocked out already. Now, I would like to know, what do you think of these lane matchups? What do you think of... Uh, I would just like to input Studio's input. Uh, they picked Rumble because he's hot. He has no strategic significance, he's just hot. Fantastic. I, I like the thinking. I really like the thinking, you know? <laughs> um, does Rumble counter Renekton, or does Renekton counter Rumble? It's a better way of looking at it. I have no idea, because this is not a matchup I've seen for a long time, if ever, for that matter. But I suspect... Especially in the early levels, 1, 2, and 3, it should go to Renekton. I'm going to say that before I open Studio's message, because I'm sure he's about to tell me. Skill-based matchup can go either way. Yeah. I, 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 
And then looking at the junglers, you've then got Cyanide and Shen, uh, sorry, Cyanide and Maluno, Shen and Riven, both of whom probably going to put some pressure down on that top lane to try and give their champion the advantage. Um, once uh, Shusha is able to pick up that Hextech Revolver and get some lifesteal back from that Flame Spitter, it's going to be able to keep him in lane a little bit more because, of course, Young Buck has Cull the Meek, which is going to give him sustain from very early levels. So I'm very interested to see how this matchup goes. I really like both champions. They're both super, super aggressive. Then, of course, you've got the soraka Urgot combo on the bottom lane, and they're going up against Ash Janna. So non-sustain versus sustain. Another very, very interesting one, but think about the mid to late game. The tanky DPS of Rumble, Rise, Urgot, and Riven. That's a huge, huge, huge beefy front line that's going to be very difficult to get through. And if they manage to break through the, the, the ranks and you know, catch Slepper off guard, Slepper's going to be in a bit of trouble. Certainly we want to watch, and I do really like Fnatic Line. There's a lot of AoE and it's a very tanky group. So, these later team fights will be fun. And we're going to find out in 30 seconds exactly how it plays. There's quite a bit of global presence there from AL, just in Slepper and Maluno. Yeah, that is true as well. Combine that with the wish from Soraka, you know, in case somebody gets caught up on the top of the middle lane, that's going to be very, very powerful. But just before we start, we are going to throw up one more ad break, and we'll be back with the quarterfinal, S Fnatic versus Absolute Legends. All right. So... I need to check my overlays for everybody that has uh, ad blockers. I think my game has also decided... Oh, there we go. Ooh, Triumphant Rise, Amethyst Ash. Man, Cyanide letting the side down. Only non-skinned. Not cool. And he could have the best in the game if he went bunny. Yeah, exactly. Not cool at all. So we're almost, almost at 20k viewers, guys. Let's break that 20k. Show them really what this competition is all about. There is still another game coming up after this. And we're going to have to see exactly which one's going to be the best pick. Before we do, though, I need to update my overlay. And then I need to update it. So we have Fnatic on the right-hand side, Absolute Legends on the left-hand side. And ladies and gentlemen, we are into the quarterfinal. Let's get a prediction on chat. Where is first blood going to come? Top, middle, or bottom lane? Top, middle, or bottom lane, guys. That's what I want to know. Which team, which composition, which players are going to pick up that first blood, but top, middle, or bottom? A lot of people saying top at the moment. And a very aggressive start from Absolute Legends. If somebody gets caught with that dark binding, it's going to hurt. For everybody to remember as well, Ultra Face is extinct. All right, we're going to be calling him extinct throughout the game because that is his actual nickname. We want to respect that. Now, what do you think XPK is going to build with Rise? Are you anticipating a you know double Rod of Ages like the sort of popular build of the moment is with him? I think double Rod of Ages, but one would not surprise me a bit, and maybe even an Archangels again now. Now that they added the AP, or up the AP ratio a bit more on his uh, Q, getting those items actually benefits again, rather than leaving it at the catalyst and the tier like it always was before. Now we can keep a very close eye on it. Of course, this is the reworked Rise after, I think, two patches, I believe. So his ultimate's going to give him that movement speed buff. And I've seen in quite a few messages in chat earlier saying XPK is considered to be one of the best Rise players in EU. Not a hundred percent certain about that, but nevertheless, he's one of the best mids in the EU at least. So he's going to be throwing out as many of those overloads as he can. There's the first one. Yep, yeah, straight on to the Ruwa. Going to pull it and give it to Lamia. So with a bot lane that already has a ridiculous amount of mana thanks to Soraka, they're going to give him the blue buff as well, which makes obviously a lot of sense. Ribbon doesn't need blue. Doesn't need the mana regen, I say. The experience is nice. But they've got some plan up this lead, which means Cyanide shouldn't need that extra. Oh, now with a level 2 Urgot reaching bottom lane. Okay, he's missed a couple of CS. 
but with that blue buff CS, the gold he gets from that itself, he should be evened out slightly. And the fact that, as I say, he is now level 2, and he will be able to outfarm, and he will be able to zone Ash and Zinnick, Slepper and Zinnick, sorry, for ages with this blue buff. He should be able to catch up in that sense. Yeah. Opt in to put a point into that Terra Capacitor early as well. That was obviously to negate some of the damage from the blue buff. Okay, look how much damage he's taking in return from Slepper. Phoenix is going to be able to heal that up shortly, but of course, we mentioned this earlier, Soraka really needs a couple of levels before that Astral Blessing is able to heal enough hit points. We're keeping a close eye on the lanes at the moment. I think the top lane is really where a lot of the pressure is going to come down. XPK in the middle, he's taken a bit of damage from um, Extinct already. Look at the damage coming out from Young Buck. He lands that um, Ruthless Predator onto Shushe. Locks him up for a little bit. Cyanide still waiting. Red buff is down to half. He still has level 3, so he's got all of his ability to knock up on the stun. First what happens in the middle, as I'm trying to watch uh, top lane, they do manage to get the stun. I'm going to rewind that very, very quickly and actually watch this lane. There it goes. The Dark Binding Ignite and the Tormented Soil. The last tick is going to be enough to pick up that kill. Let's throw on the directed camera, fast forward the game, just to catch up. And, oh, there we go. Haven't missed out on too much. Riven and Shen looked at each other, but that was about it. Looked at one another, said hello, and, yeah, first blood going the way of uh, Extinct. And that's not going to be helpful for XPK on Rise. So blue buff on Urgot at the moment, down to the last 25%. Hasn't really been able to convert it to any kills. Uh, 24 CS to 24, so hasn't even really been able to do a whole lot on the farm side of things. And in the top lane we have Cyanide, his red buff is about to wear off, and he does move forward. There goes the Broken Wings, the knockup happens as well as the stun Ignite is down. One or two more hits, they do manage to pick up the kill. Cyanide just steps out of turret range at the very, very last second. Nicely done. The capacitor does land one acid hunter, two acid hunters. Not able to follow it up with another one though. And that's going to be the last of the blue buff for Lamia. So one to one with the farm and the kills. Only a hundred gold difference at the moment. We do have Shen approaching the bottom lane as uh, Zinnick and Slepper start chasing out to Lamia. This blue buff is still up. He's going to time out during the fight. Let's see if they can kill him in time. Summon hill goes out. Lamia gets really tanky thanks to the heal from Soraka, but he's going really, really low. Maluna still chasing under the tower. We'll get the kill. Taunts away from the last shot, and he gets out of there with the blue buff. His blue buff intact. Unfortunately, it did wear out on Lamia, so they weren't able to steal it back to refresh that timer. Of course it did. He's down to the last minute of his. My bad. Yeah, very, very close. It was just that literally one attack before those little blue orbs disappeared. Now on the top lane, Shushe opting to go for a Blasting Wand as opposed for maybe saving up towards the um, uh, 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 Revolver. And that's going to help. Look at the damage that Flame Spitter and his uh, Electro Harpoons are actually putting out. Slice and Dice used just to get away from that Flame Spitter. Spitter. And Shushe going to be trying to play this as a kill lane. Going to be trying to get an advantage with the damage that he can get early on. Soraka He's in his being as annoying as possible, just <laughs> zoning Soraka on his own in the bot lane. There's not much he can do to be on. Jalo with a shield on. Her auto attacks hurt, so... Well, it does add, what, 30-odd attack damage at this point already? 23. Yeah, level 2, just about 23. Lamia now, the capacitor does land a few acid hunters. Slepper's down, that's the last potion for Slepper. Summon a heal is available. And once again, we have sign up in the top brush. Young Buck so, so close. Slice and Dice does get away. Electro Harpoon lands as well. They're going to be trying the second one lands. Not going to commit to that dive. No equalizer on behalf of Rumble Soap. Not going to be willing to tank. But now Morgana set up. Going to eat Dark Binding to the face of Cyanide. Soul Shackles goes up. Ignite has been popped as well. Does get stunned up. The last pop does get thrown away in the background now. Shushe is going to be trying to push onto Young Buck, but he can't take a 1v2. And very well, really played, well by played by Extinct. That yeah. flash was brilliant. He just waited to see which way Riven wanted to go. Did go to the tower. She could have gone anywhere just to break that chain. But uh, when he found out exactly which way she was going, she committed. Flash behind it. No matter if road and broken wing charges would have broken that stun. And it did end with a kill. 
A great, great, great play by Extinct and very, very good pressure. 3 1, Absolute Legends with an early lead. And we're going to have to see if they can hold that. We're going to have to see if Fnatic can stop the rot. Slow down the kills that they're giving away. 900 gold behind, so that's one dragon. But the key is, of course, to make sure they don't give up any more. Don't feed any more champions. 2 0 Morgana. Four points into tormented soil at the moment. Ping going down onto blue buff. So this is probably for XPK. He's going to move back to this ancient golem. Grab that mana region and spam out a bajillion of those overloads. Really, really crank up the uh, amount of mana he's got in Ooh. the tier of the goddess. Look who's wearing blue buff. Who is wearing blue? Ooh, that went to Riven. That is Not very idea. annoying. That is very, very it, annoying. Yeah. It did give her level 6, so it make her a little bit stronger this gang bottom, but she could have got it off another camp instead, and now XPK is going to have a little bit of trouble when Extinct, who any second now, should end up going and getting his own blue buff. Now Maluno is just chilling in this top lane, camping a little bit better. I think they're, they're going to consider doing a tower dive yet. Yeah. There goes the equalizer. Fairly smart from Shusha. It's going to be able to pick up all the farm. Maluna just ulted. He was at Wolves, he killed the big wolf, and he ulted to Young Buck to save them while they were fighting against Sushay in the top lane. Ah, alright, I missed that. So that was to save him, that was why I was hanging around. So Stand United has been used by Shen. That means it is on cooldown. Lamia, sorry, Cyanide has fallen back from that bottom lane, so he's not going to be able to, you know, has not committed to a push or going for a kill. We got a bunch of pings now on the red buff on the Fnatic side, so I'm not quite sure what they're thinking about. But the bottom lane now does have their ultimate. Slepper has the Crystal Arrow. Of course, Lamia does have the Hyperkinetic Position Reverser. Quite possibly the coolest ability name in the game. And we have Maluno setting up in this top lane. He's moving in with that red buff. There's no equalizer coming out from Fuchsia. So there goes the stun. He's running down, going to try to get away. The Scrap Heap is going to be used. The Taunt lands at max range. The red buff slow. is going to be trying to get away once again. He's now overheated, not going to be able to cost any more abilities, has slowed down Shen. But he does not have uh, a flash available, or only the Ignite. One slice is going to push him forward. Young Buck once again takes another slow. The Ignite plus the tower hits, that's a dead shoe shape. He did manage to pull the champions away for quite a while though, so that bought Cyanide some time to get up into the lane. Lamia and Zinnik fighting with Slepper, oh, sorry, Lamia fighting with Slepper and Zinnik in the bot lane. Does get a heal from Soraka for a little bit of uh, armor. Ah, they were going to keep chasing. How unfortunately, Extinct couldn't quite get down there fast enough. Double buff on Cyanide. If he can catch Young Buck, he may have enough damage to actually put down a kill. That's the real, the real push, you know, a, a potential. But he's going to have to try and lock down Young Buck. That's Sorry, Ash Oda landed mid. XPK lands a binding. Gets the bind. Uh, ult down. Maluno comes in, steals the kill with a Vorpal Blade. Just for uh, well, getting an assist. Wanted to get a bit of a goat. Well, you can watch that kill from the start. There comes the ash arrow, smack in the face, and that's the kill. <laughs> really nicely played. A bit cheeky from Maluno, to be honest. Careful with your fast forward in the back and watch the bottom lane. Yep, and we are on directed camera, so we're keeping a very close eye on it. Now we're down to the real time. Very, very good position reversal with Lamia. He manages to swap places with Maluno, get out of the range of that um, taunt, and move to his tower for safety. So we are back on directed camera. He's now Absolute Legends picking up the first dragon of the game, and that extends their gold lead to 3,000 gold at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what Suche and Sinai were trying to do there. They were both just hitting that top tower while Youngbuck took out the minions. But they were never going to kill it. No chance in hell were there enough minions there for uh, them to take that tower down. And by Sinai doing that, he opened up the dragon, which you saw Ayo took. Yeah. We've reached that point now. 12 minutes in the game. Dragon is a real, very real possibility. Everyone is strong enough for it. Slepper's been caught out in the bottom lane, though. It looks like he may have disconnected or he was in the shop. Something along those lines. Those Acid Hunters are landing. Stand United comes out from Shen. Now, all of a sudden, the pressure gets turned around. Lamia so close to being able to put down, to, to take out Slepper. Wish has been used by Felix, so they're not going to be able to use that anymore. Summon a heal's not available. A Flash Monsoon pushes Lamia back in direction of Slepper. If he can land a few more attacks, no, unfortunately not going to happen. The taunt under the tower just misses, but along with the flash from Felox, he does get out of range of the Dark Binding. 
It's not going to be enough though. Extinct does take him out. And Maluno just tanking that turret all day long. Really well played by Absolute Legends. And so unlucky just not to have enough damage to take out that Ash before Stanch United could be cast. Top lane now, there's more pressure going down. Young Buck putting damage down onto Shushe. The Equalizer is available though. So if Shushe can catch Young Buck out in a you know advantageous position, apply some slows, he may actually want to go for a fight. The first Harpoon does land. He does have Ignite available as well, but Dominus is there for Young Buck. That's plus 300 hit points that would have to be burned through. And I don't know if Shushe's got the damage to do that just yet. And goes the Slice and Dice. Colin Lee comes out. Decent damage coming out with the Ignite going down. There comes Domi uh, the, the Dominus. Overheat means that Equalizer can't be cost and the Equalizer fails. The Equalizer completely fails not landing on Young Buck. Had that landed, that would have killed the Crocodile. That would have taken the Crocodile out. But sadly, it was misaimed. Really unlucky for Shushay. Shushay's got to be kicking himself after that. And actually, he's got to keep running because Meluno is coming up. Not quite fast enough though, Suja is back and away from the tower. And Young Buck now has the advantage of the lifesteal. Look at that, he's back up to almost half health with a couple of Cull and Meeks in the minions. And as a result, he's now denying Suja from creeps by pushing him into the tower. And Suja has got a base. Look at the farm difference as well, it's only 10 at the moment. It is slowly starting to grow. In the middle lane, 116 on Rise, 122 on Morgana. Ash in the bottom lane, 89 to the 95 on Urgot. We do have Riven coming forward, but... No, not, not close enough. The position reverser comes up, immediately flashes away. There was a bit of miscommunication there because Cyanide was miles away. Slep is now applying damage onto Fairlux, pushing him all the way back. They've now fallen back as well. Morgana's jumped up in the background. Dark Binding picks up a creep instead of Lamia. So unlucky, but look at the damage. Lamia dropped to 290. A few ticks of that tormented soil really hits hard. Astral Blessing comes out. If Extinct can pick up a, a Dark Binding, it does land onto Riven. And look at the damage, one or two more attacks, Flash moves forward, the Soul Shackles almost manages to pick up Riven, but it does uh, uh, take out Lamia in the background. And wow, Ryze manages to sneak down, I completely missed that, he's now run from the tower. If he can get another Rune Prison out, that's Ash locked up, the Wind Slash is going to put some damage, Step is trying to take out Riven in the background, Stand United used, that's going to save Ash for a few seconds longer. She's going to start pushing forward now, Ash, one more overload is all that would have been needed. The Taunt manages to land onto um, Soraka, Riven's going to lock up Maluno, no key strike, no stun unfortunately. And wow, it looks like it's going well for Fnatic, and all of a sudden another Absolute me uh, Legends member rocks up. What was that, th 3 for 2 at the end of the day? 4 for 2? I completely lost count, and I don't want to make a guess at it, but it does end the score at 10 and 3. That goes without saying, can't uh, dispute that. And at 15 minutes, Absolute Legends are ahead by 4,000 gold. That's an Infinity Edge plus sum. And... Well, Fnatic, they've got to make something big here. We do have a dragon respawning soon. Maybe we'll get a fight going on there. They are by no means out. But it's they looking do have scary. to win this next fight. And interesting, look at the way uh, Young Buck is leveling up his Renekton at the moment. He's got five points into Cold Meek. So that's going to be increasing his lifesteal. And he's leveling up Slice and Dice primarily for the armor reduction. 20% armor reduction. It also hits for 240 odd damage per uh, slice or per dice, as it were. Um, and I find that very interesting, considering his Ruthless Predator is his primary DPS ability. Rose of Charge lands onto Zinnick, followed up by one or two of the Acid Hunters from Urgot. And very, very interesting to see how that goes down. Another ultimate used from Shushe to try farm the wave, and it picked up two out of the six creeps. I, I don't know, it, it feels like there's a little bit of a lack of practice on that um, rumble from Shushe. His ultimates have been a little bit out of place, a little bit mistimed. And it, it's costing him the lane in that top lane. And when you've got Morgana and Shen making their way top as well, Sinai's got to get out of there with his arc. Oh, he turned around. That was never good. The stun comes out. The tool comes out. Sinai melts. Extinct uses ult. Wow. Maybe a bit overkill. But. The kill's the kill, and it takes away the oracles, which is a huge deal as far as AO are concerned. Yeah, 5,000 gold behind, and adding that another 400 gold difference. It's just pushing them further and further and further. Look at the vision on um, Fnatic's side. The only thing that's warded is these middle, middle bushes, these middle grass. That's it. Nothing else is warded up 
On behalf of SK Gaming, they've got one Dragon Ward and one top Tribush Ward. That's it. Now, if they can hold this, if Fnatic can keep it at 5,000 gold for the next 10 or so minutes and farm their way back into this game, it's going to help. That, that's really what they need to do. But the catch is, of course, they keep giving away these kills. The pressure from Morgana and Shen has just been so, so good. Cyanide has not been able to pull off as effective ganks as Shen has been able to. And Extinct roaming, 5-1-2 on Morgana. That's a scary Morgana. Youngberg, how is this lane famed out? Well, just by that damage. When it should have been skill based, as we previously mentioned, it is so far in Youngberg's favor now. And while Chen nicked that quill early, Telepa is going to die in the bottom lane to Lamia, Filiox, and Cyanide. Okay, there's the kill in rewind. Position reverser caught out of place. He managed to take him out. I like this rewind feature. And I want to direct the camera and fast the forward. Rewind feature. So. Four more seconds, we'll be back up to real time. Now, Dragon is back up. If Fnatic can pick this up, it's going to do quite a bit to help them get back into this game. And of course, they are a little bit out of position. Cyanide now is being caught out. He does manage to get taunted from Maluno. He's going to be trying to get away. Is the dash going to be available? Three seconds, two seconds. Another dash is going to go out. Dodges the Dark Binding. A very, very good Valor. That gets Cyanide to safety. But it does open up the Dragon for Absolute Legends. Now, Slepper's not actually back. He has respawned, but he's still not halfway through the map. And he does have his arrow, though. And to be honest, XP comes out of mana there. Cyanide now low on health. They're going to have to back. Fnatic are not going to contest this at all. And, wow, well, <laughs> Extinct is just having some fun with the guys in the bottom lane. He might even be able to turn around and steal the blue buff as well. That's the real problem. Um, not only have they now lost Dragon, they're now going to lose the, the, their, their buffs as well. It's not necessarily required for a rise. He's starting to hit the point where he's got a bit of mana. He's got the ability to... Um... Oh, look at the pressure on the bottom lane here. Lamia and Young Buck. And a flash from Lamia to get out of way of that arrow. That was really, really good. The Dominus has come out from Young Buck. He's going to be putting down as much damage as he can. XPK is a little bit overcommitted. Finally, he does go down in the background. Cyanide's going to be the first one to fall for Fnatic. XPK is taking too much damage to come back into this fight. He now goes down. Lamia's blown up from the four-man of Absolute Legends. And, wow, Absolute Legends, playing absolutely legendary. Almost 10,000 gold ahead. They've picked up the first tower of the game. They might even convert this to a second tower. That's hate... almost as bad as a studio level part. Oh, man. come on. That had to be done. It had to be done. But, uh, uh, wow. Absolute Legends really, really, really in the driving seat at the moment. They do lose a tower in the background, but... That gold gap is just growing further and further behind. Urgot doesn't really offer a lot of, you know, DPS in comparison to Ash, you know, his counterpart. Sitting at 0-4. Riven, again, needs to be able to be fed to be able to get into those teams and deal as much damage as possible. Only sitting on 1 and 3. It's just not looking very good for Fnatic right now. Twenty-one minutes in, past the surrender mark. So Fnatic are going to play this out. Credit to them. At the end of the day, El could always screw up and throw the game away. So there's no reason to jump out and surrender from this year. And it's still a rise who gets really good in the late game. Riven, who, admittedly, is I don't want to say underfarmed because she's in the jungle, so she's going to be a little bit poorer than normal. But we've all seen how strong she can be. You put her in the top lane when she can get farmed. So, Cyanad needs to try and get some gold to his belt, whether it be kills or whether it be taking some CS from a lane somewhere, is up to Fnatic, but if he can start getting some damage, things might change. And so far, we haven't really seen too much of an impact from Sushate, although he does just inch past that arrow. That was so close. Equalizer goes out to try and save that tower, but wow, ooh, let's click there. What a close Ash arrow. I honestly thought, I saw it fly past. And thought it had bugged out and it was going to hit and jitter back in a minute. I but. thought exactly the same. The hitbox on Rumble is obviously a little bit smaller than the actual character size. So, I think that's how we managed to get away with that. The skin of his teeth. The skin of his teeth. So, Gold Graph is now up to 9,000 gold. And there's the numbers on your screen. You guys can have a look at exactly that. And look at the Christmas tree of wards. 
Absolute legends have got the entire red buff side of Fnatic's jungle warded up. Fnatic even more so. That's five in the red buff side, two in the blue buff side. They really don't want to get caught out. And they really want to make sure they know what's happening on their side of the map. Dark Binding goes out. Doesn't manage to connect with XPK. Even if it had, it just would have popped the Banshee's Veil. But of course you have to pop the Banshee's Veil before you can catch him out and real, deal real damage to them. So do you think this is possible to come back? Do you think a team that is this far ahead, three turrets to one, and picked up the dragon, almost 10,000 gold at the 24 minute mark? Everything's possible to come back from. But it very much relies on what well, AL here. If, if Fnatic had to come back from this, AL need to hand it to them on a silver platter by screwing up monumentally. And I really cannot see that happening. Especially when you consider Morgana 614 and Shen 605. You've got Renekton who has farmed his way into this game, 160 CS. Sitting on uh, 125 at the minute, got so much gold from the assists. Cyanide almost going to dodge that arrow, but it just catches on him in the head and completely melted under the damage from Morgana. Now they have turned their attention to Young Buck, but without having an AD carry there, without Urgot to be able to drop some of that armor and, and really just continually put some damage down, Young Buck just effectively walks away. XPK is very, very low on mana as well. His Tear of the Goddess is only halfway full at 24 minute mark. Has not had a single uh, blue buff. In the top lane, Rumble gets taken out by Slepo and Ultraface. Or Extinct, rather. And it's just looking... 10,000 old lead has yeah. just been broken. More and more dire for Fnatic. It looks as though Fnatic may be going out of this qualifier. But of course, they do have to lose the Nexus before that happens. You consider every inner turret except for the mid lane is now down. And Absolute Legends have turned their attention. XPK's jumped forward. He flashed for that one. Didn't really have a huge amount, <clears throat> huge amount of mana. Slice and Dice comes out from Young, but he's still tanking the turret. One more auto attack closes that out. And a great Dark Binding coming out from Extinct. Flash plus Dark Binding. That picks up the kill onto uh, uh, Felix. And my money is on GG right now, unfortunately. Looks as though Fnatic are just a little bit too far behind. They don't have the farm, they don't have the gold. Absolute edge. I want to give Slepper some credit here, because he's landed quite a few arrows, which is a rare occurrence when Slepper plays Ash. Well, there you go, Slepper. Seems you've learned how to aim. Well played, well played. <laughs> Ash at the moment, 4-1-8. Infinity Edge completed, Zeal completed. And sitting on enough gold to finish that Phantom Dancer, Shusha is now caught out, eats an Ash Arrow to the face, is going to go down in the background. Another kill goes the way of Absolute Legends. And it looks as though AL are going to be qualifying for the semi-finals. So Mr. Admin Man on Skype, what are the potential games for the next, one, for the next round? What are the two matchups that we could potentially see casted? And we're going to have to decide which one is going to be the best one. Now we're going to keep a close eye. I've got it on, on uh, directed camera at the moment, so Riot are deciding what we're watching. And once we get closer to the next big team fight, I'll take control again. But thank you to everybody that's tuned in. This is, of course, the DreamHack qualifier. There will be another one on Thursday. I will be back to cast that. I think Studio is going to join me for a couple of hours. I just have to confirm with him during the course of tomorrow. And Panky, what have you thought of the game so far? game so far, I hate to say it, but it's been a stomp. They all just, everywhere they've gone, they've picked up a kill, they've taken an advantage, they've grabbed an objective. Fnatic just don't seem to have had an answer to it at all. Pressure coming from Shen as well. Maluno, every time Maluno has ganked, somebody has died. Uh, I think he's failed maybe one or two ganks or, you know, not led to a kill. And it, it, it makes such a big difference. Sets up all the lanes. Now, we do have Baron happening. This is a five-man Fnatic. But, of course, Shen will be able to just jump in there with Stand United. So, he's managed to pick up the Dragon in the bottom you know, in the bottom half of the map. And for the time being, at least, Absolute Legends have been chased away from the Baron buff. Dominus was used from Young Buck. Well, that is very interesting.
the gold graph has grown even further now. 15k is the difference. 15,000 gold. And this whole time, Millionaire's just been shoving the bottom lane again. He got that dragon, as you say, while they were apparent. Rotated to bottom, and he's keeping Suchet occupied while the rest of AL shove into the mid lane. I'm gonna rotate around, go backwards and forwards. They can all be spotted. Steam will just about miss that binding. And I think he's just waiting for a slip up. They need AL here to dive under a tower and therefore throw the game with a really silly fight, but it's, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I know we need a Blitzcrank or something to pull him in there. It would need even more than one fight for that to happen. 15,800 gold. That's terrible. There comes the flash position reversal. So that is Maluno caught out. So that is going to be a lot of gold coming out. But he's still putting out a lot of damage, even solo. So the kills bonus does go the way of Rise. And that pushes the gold a little bit. But while that's happening, we now have the rest of Absolute Legends pushing for Baron Nasha. AL, uh, Fnatic are getting closer. Dark Binding lands onto Cyanide. And look at that damage. More than half of his hit points just from two spells. I'm only moving, whoop, gonna pop that scoreboard down. Keep a close eye on the game screen and what's happening there. That was really nicely played by Fnatic. They knew that if they went to Baron to start anything, AO would start a fight, Maluna would ult in, they'd lose the fight, that'd be the 2 So they all just went straight on Maluna, burst him down before AO even knew what was happening. They weren't even at the Baron at that point, but AO saw it and went, Oh, they're killing down there. Quick, do Baron. Started it, but they just didn't quite have that damage. Fnatic gambled with that. They weren't sure how quickly they'd kill it, and it paid off. They got all the way across there, they stopped the Baron attempt, and they've relieved the pressure for now. It hasn't made a huge dent in that gold score difference, so unless they start picking up towers or killing multiple champions, yeah, it's pretty much GG. Shen almost finished his Randian's Omen as well, so he's got that Wits End, he's got the Sunfire Cape as well as Aegis of the Legion. And once Randian's Omen is completed, that's going to negate a lot of the damage coming out from Riven and Urgot. Going to move the slow down, and now let's see what happens. Very few wards from Absolute Legends. They're baiting in a Fnatic here. Yeah. Nice, have a very, very close side. There goes the Dark Binding that's landed onto Shushe. Uh, Extinct jumps forward and gets a very, very good Dark Binding. Or oh, Soul Shackles manages to catch everybody for the first proc. Locks up Lamia in the background, so Lamia will be the first one to fall down. Young Buck is now turning his attention to the top lane. Riven's the next to fall. Now they're going to turn their attention to Rise. Shushe puts some damage down, gets really good damage onto Slepper though, but gets blown up before he can kill him. XPK's on the run, and this feels to me that it's GG. There's the Surrender vote. There goes the Surrender vote. Wow, Lamia's gone. Lamia was not hanging about. And Fnatic taken out by Absolute Legends in the quarterfinals. Absolute Legends in control of that game from the very first minute. Maluno on Shen. Everybody played phenomenally well. Every single member of Absolute Legends played phenomenally well. Young Buck in the top lane. You had Slepper landing those crystal arrows. You heard it from Panky himself. He normally misses. So great, great, great play. I'm going to bring up the bracket really quickly, guys, uh, so we can have a look at exactly what it looks like. Um, we are on West at the moment. So the bracket we now have, uh, I think I opened the wrong one. I may have the links backwards. Yeah, I do. Moscow 5 versus Cypher. And, oh no. Counter Logic EU. Okay, ignore me. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk to the admins about the bracket. We have at least one more game coming up, guys. Uh, I'm looking at my Skype chat right now.